Wow. Have you already received? I said, have you already received? Can you turn me up in the monitors a little bit, bud? You are great. You're doing miracles so great. Yes, yes, yes. And there's no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You're doing miracles so great. And I've looked around and I can't find no one else. There is no one else. Nobody else like you. Mm. You are great. You're doing miracles so great. And there's no, 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 nobody like you. And I can't find nobody like Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. <laughs> nobody else could feel me. Mm -mm. Nobody else could heal me. Nobody else could reach that far down to where I was. Nobody else could love a wretch like me. Nobody else could believe in a wretch like me. When everybody else gave up on me, he said, daughter, I'll pick you up. I'll pick you up. I'll brush you off. I'll presence, Lord. Mm. Fill this place with your glory. 
do what only you can do. You may be seated. just working give honor to pastor Miss Joni Ashton in Austin and to have my family with me and my friends means everything argued with the Lord I wanted to uh, do a shout message because I'm comfortable with shout okay. didn't want to expose myself that's for sure wanted to come in here great and mighty amen and God said no it's time to take the mask off because <laughs> that's a little bit of what's wrong with church is everybody just running around acting like everything's all right. We've learned how to patty cake for Jesus. Well, at least in Louisiana. I don't know about y'all, but we've learned how to patty cake for Jesus. And how are you good? Amen. Now, I don't want to hear all your problems. Don't get me wrong. I want you to say good. Amen. Come on, tap your neighbor and say it's going to be all right. So it, it, it's going to be a little raw for me, a little rough for me, but I'm going to obey the voice of the Lord. I won't, um, I won't read it if, if, if you'll trust me that I'm in the Bible. Will y'all do that? And you can read it when you get home. <laughs> in Genesis chapter 11, we read the story of Terah. Terah is Abraham's father. And we often hear the axiom, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Anybody? Well, Terah is that Abraham's daddy. And Terah had three sons, Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. And it kind of sounds like they're having a pretty good life there in Ur of the Chaldees. And Haran was the firstborn, and he is also the father of Lot. Abraham and Sarah get married. Nahor and Milcah get married. And it just kind of sounds like everything is going along as planned. And three boys, you know, ah, we're going to have grandkids to play with soon. That's what every parent looks forward to. And they're living in one of the greatest cities of the time. And no doubt... Tara's expectations were high. Wow, honey, think of all we can get done with three boys. Not one, but three. But as life has a way of doing, we find out in Scripture that his firstborn, Haran, dies. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on just a minute, God. Um, you gave me three. Okay. Uh, now there's two. That, I, I, that's not what I was expecting. Um, why would you give just to take? Mm, you, you see, what I came to talk to you about just for a minute is... It's the things that you never saw coming that will break you down. It's the things that we never anticipated that can get you questioning your faith. You see, it's that unexpected struggle. It's that unplanned injury. It's that unanticipated sickness or diagnosis. It's that unforeseen loss. It's that storm, that hurricane that never showed up on the radar. 
But hold on a minute, God. I, I had plans for that boy. Mm -hmm. I had high expectations for him. Yeah, 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 Tara. It's those unrealized expectations that will cut you so deep. They can change who you are. And scripture says that Heron died in the presence of his father, Tara. Hmm. Now every parent tried to imagine holding that boy, just holding the ghost of hope lost at this point. And the text says though that at some point after he lost his boy, Tara made the decision, pastor, to move on. So he gathered what was left of his family, uh, Abram and, and Sarah and Lot, who was Haran's son and his wife, and they headed to, are you ready for it? Canaan. You, you, your only way to promise. So the, the scripture says they went forth together to go into the land of Canaan, but, but, hmm. But, 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 but they came to a place called Haran, huh. and they settled there. Haran, um, that sounds vaguely familiar. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, right. That is the name of that which you lost. Okay. Okay, that's the name of the grief that you bear. Oh, that's, that's the name of that which caused you to question your faith. Okay. Okay. We stop there. Okay. I get it. Okay. The Bible says that eventually Abraham hears and obeys the voice of God and Lot and his wife, and they eventually leave Haran headed for the land of promise. They're headed towards Canaan. But not Tara. Mm -mm. Tara decided to stay. He stopped, then he settled mm -hmm, in a place that reminded him of what he lost. Mm -mm -mm -mm. He decided to take up residence, oh Jesus, in the place of pain. Instead of continuing on the journey to promise, he said, you know what? You know what? I've been hurt just a little bit too bad. And, and there's something about this place right here that's kind of become comfortable to me. Ha has anybody ever got comfortable in your pain? Oh, oh we don't, we don't want to. Y'all want to play church tonight? We can do that. And, and so reading it. And I started thinking, you know what? I get it. <laughs> I get it, Tara. I, um, I know what that feels like, that unexpected loss. Yeah. I still remember waking up that morning um, expecting a normal, ordinary, good day. And... Um, Family and I went to town. It was just like every other ordinary day. Um, and, and, and we were going to go meet daddy for lunch. And as usual, we're kind of waiting on daddy. So, so we get a phone call. Um, and, I, and my husband answered it. And I, I said, oh, it's probably just daddy telling us where to meet him for lunch. But I could tell by his reaction that um, it wasn't a normal phone call. And he just said, um, something's wrong with your dad. Jimmy's having a hard time waking him up. So we're not going to go to lunch. We're going to go back out to the farm, which is daddy's house. And I didn't need any other words. His face told me all I needed to know. And just like that, daddy was gone. My world, my rock, no warning. No nudge from God, hey, prepare. It's a big storm coming. <laughs> Just gone. Unexpected loss. No goodbye. 
<laughs> no, no, no extra minute. Just, just a minute. Just, just 60 seconds. No extra minute to say all the things that I always wanted to tell him, but had too much pride. Just gone. Just gone. Unforeseen devastation. I get it, Tara. Expectations that will never be realized. I get it. Tara, if you're here today, I want you to know, I get it, Tara. You lost, and you lost big. And the loss was so deep that the impact literally takes your breath and it shakes your balance. Where you were steady yesterday, you're faltering today, I get it. It's profound. It is cavernous. It is unfathomable. It is bottomless. The tears are hot and they steam down your face for a while, but then the anger takes its place. Can we be real? And then the questions. Oh yeah, I was one of those that said I would never question God. But I found myself in that house that day. Just, I, I still believe. I still believe, but why? God, what do I do now? Oh, well, 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 we'll be happy to tell you. Why your father's still laying there in the corner, we live in the country, hasn't come to get him yet. The bishop's going to call you into daddy's office and reveal a letter that daddy wrote. Upon my untimely death, it's my desire, because I heard from God that my daughter Vani and her husband Aaron would pastor the church. Really? <laughs> Can we get him to the funeral home yet first? Okay, 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 okay. Um, onward, soldiers. March forward, always forward, always forward. Come on, lead the people, be strong, be brave, be courageous. Um, oh, okay, daddy, I will. Okay, 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 I will. And I did, I did, I did on the outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but the soul of me, the soul of me, I never missed the church. But the soul of me became so tangled and so entwined in this deep, unrelenting pain. I smiled and said, God bless you. I played the part. I didn't cry at the funeral. I patted everybody on the back and said, we're going to be all right. Oh, don't you worry. We're here now. But then, oh, but then night would fall. Mm. And the sorrow would suck me back into the darkness. But can I tell you, I was, I was on my way to promise. Trying to get there like everybody else. I, I promise. I, that was my plan. Those, those were my plans. I really did, but it was on a weak, vulnerable day. I looked up and I saw a sign and it said, welcome to Haran, a place called Hertzville. Stay as long as you like. Uh, thank you, uh, Hertzville. Thank you, um, Mayor, for the invite. But the family and I, we're on our way to promise. <laughs> we're on our way to promise. We should keep going. Um, you see, we have these possibilities in front of us. We were just handed, on top of my dad's deathbed, we were handed a pristine legacy and a heritage. Um, and, and all we have to do is just walk in it. So, um, and then I hear the voices, keep going, Vonnie, keep going, keep going. Promise, promise and purpose is just ahead. But I was, I got tired. Um, and that pain had turned into a darkness that I had never encountered before. 
And um, it became kind of hard to focus. Uh, I was like, hey guys, AJ, Lynn's son, um, mama's tired today. I try to be the strong one. I try to be the glue that keeps us all together, but mom's tired today. Can, can we just stop? I can't journey anymore. Can we just stop here in Hurtsville for a minute? Can you listen to me for a minute? It's not a sin to get tired. It's not a sin to need a rest. And it's not a crime to need to stop. But please, I'm begging somebody in here today, don't stop in Hurtsville. I'm just talking to maybe one person that can hear me today. Maybe you're online. You're not even present. I'm talking to somebody. You're on your way to promise. And life was looking good. And I understand that life threw you a curveball. I understand that the unexpected happened. That the unplanned, the loss, the betrayal, the failure, the storm, the wound, the rejection, and the damage. I get it. And you try to go on. You really do, but you got tired and the grief took your strength. I just came to tell you I get it. But don't stop in Hurtsville. Because I came to tell you that it matters where you stop in pain. I, I, can I say it again because I want to make sure you get it. It matters where you stop in pain. It, it matters whose house you go to when you're hurt. I, I feel the Holy Ghost right there. It matters what group you choose to surround yourself with when you're dealing with church hurt, when you're dealing with grief, when you're dealing with loss, when you're dealing with question. It matters what we do with our pain. You got tired and maybe you stopped in the wrong spot. Mm. You stopped in that place that had memories, right? You stopped in that place that has a past and that past has a name. You stopped in that place that has old feelings and, and, and brings up old hurt and old, old emotion. And maybe you were looking for closure, but can I tell you, you don't find closure in Hurtsville. You stop to catch your breath, but then eventually you settle. Settle is when you stop but stay too long. Settle is when uh, uh, you know you were born for more. And you know God's got more, but you, you don't feel like you have the strength or the energy to get there. So you just kind of lay down and you settle into the pain. And suddenly you wake up one day and the pain has become familiar. And maybe, maybe, maybe this is your testimony. I don't know. But maybe it takes alcohol to cover the pain. And maybe it takes drugs to cover the pain. And maybe it takes illicit sex to cover the pain. But I I came to tell somebody, here's the thing about Hurtsville. When you stay too long, you'll start talking like them. You stay too long, you'll start thinking like them. You stay too long, you'll start sounding like them. Let me give you some revelation that I received. You weren't bound when you got to Hurtsville. Look at your neighbor and say, you weren't bound. Mm -mm. but you stayed too long and you started getting used to the environment but I came to tell somebody who needs to hear it that God is the same God he was before you settled the truth that you knew before you stopped in Hurtsville is the same truth right now. And God's plan for your life didn't change just because you stopped in Hurtsville. But here's the thing about depression. It's tricky. 
The devil means it that way. It's something that makes the heart sick. And it breeds addiction of every size and color and form. But it also breeds lies. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't expecting even three amens on that because... We like to think that it's just something that we need pills for, but I came to tell somebody it's a tricky thing. It's a tricky thing. And part of it are the lies that you begin to believe once you start suffering, once you start grieving. The devil wants you to think, oh my God. Mm -hmm. But here, here's the deal. Most of us, we, we just die a little bit at a time. Just a little at a time. And that's what makes it so dangerous. You see, if Tara had been carrying on and hollering and shouting, I'm depressed. I don't feel like living. I, I just want to stay here in Heron because it reminds me of that boy that I lost. I'm tired of living. If he had been carrying on like that, surely, surely Abraham would have said, no, 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 daddy. No, no, no. We're not leaving you. Come on. Get up. Get up. Get up. We're going. But my guess is that's not, that's not how it happened. It probably happened just like it happens in my life and how it happens in your life. It's just a little at a time. It just starts chipping. Mm -hmm. And you see, we all know about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But could it have been... The God of Terah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Could it have, could it have been? But grief-stricken Terah stayed just too long in Hertzville. Could the story of Terah have been any different? And, and really, I came to ask you, what about your story? What about your story? What will your story be? Will you be the girl, the woman, the boy, the man who stopped in Hurtsville and stayed too long? Will you be remembered as the guy or the girl with promise, but you traded your promise and you traded your purpose for the bondage of pain? See, I came up in here believing, help me, Wendell. I came in here believing that somebody is ready for deliverance. I came in here with prayer and fasting, believing that somebody came here to be delivered. Your soul's been captive too long. And you woke up this morning and you said, I'm tired of Hurtsville. Can I talk to you from my heart for a minute? Deliverance comes. Are you ready for it? Because it's deep. Deliverance comes when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Oh, you want a revelation? All right, well, I'll give it to you. Deliverance happens when you look around and you start doing inventory of your life. Hold on, Abraham. A Abraham, A Abraham, where are you? Oh, oh Tara, he's, he's going on to promise. What? Sarah, where's Sarah? She, she's gone on to promise. Whew. Yeah, yeah, but we all stopped. Yeah, yeah, but they heard the voice of God say, it's time to get up and go. And, and, and so they obeyed the voice of God. Can I tell you something personal? When I got up one morning and I looked around and I started doing inventory, when I realized that I had stayed in pain, that I had settled for pain, when I looked around and said, hey, 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 where's my husband? And somebody said he's out there pastoring the church. Oh, oh, that was only just for me, I guess, and I'll receive it. When I asked, where's my children, Pastor? And they said, AJ and Lindsay, they've gone on to promise. And I said, wait a minute. We all stopped in Hurtsville. And they said, but they heard the voice of God saying, it's time to get up. It's time to move on to promise. When I took inventory, I looked around and I did something very spiritual. Sis, I said, I, I'm making.
making a decision. I'm not staying here. I'm coming out to hell or high water. I'm not staying here. I'm not living like this. I became desperate. He preached my message this morning and he preached it again tonight. So I thought of just sitting there and worshiping, but I thought, no, I'm going to go ahead and confirm the word. I began to scratch and claw and crawl my way out. Somebody said, why didn't you just walk out? Because I was too low down. Oh, y'all don't want it real talk. Y'all just want a patty cake. I said, because I was too low down. I had a claw. I had a scratch. I had to fight my way out. No, it wasn't easy, but I got out. When I made a decision, I'm coming out of Hurtsville. I've been too long in Hurtsville. Here's what I came to tell you. I may be late getting to promise, but I'm here. I may be late getting to world harvest, but I'm here. Oh, the devil don't like it when we get cocky about it, but I'm here to serve notice to hell, devil, and all his imps and all the haters. I'm late, but I made it. I got scars, but I made it. I made it. I made it. I made it. Somebody wants deliverance. You know what it looks like? It looks a whole lot like a decision. Can you tell your neighbor? Say it looks a whole lot like a decision. Yes, deliverance is spiritual, but it's not all spiritual. Because God will break your chains in an instant. In an instant. And then my question to you is, What are you going to do? Oh, 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 okay. Now it requires participation. I thought y'all was just going to pray for me and just put a prayer cloth on me and I was going to be different. Yeah, you will be different. But guess what? What are you going to do after the chain falls off? You're going to lay there in molly grub. You're going to lay there in the honk pen. You're going to lay there and wallow around in the honk slop. Deliverance looks a whole lot like a what did I do? Get that hog slop out for me. I'm better than this. I'm born for more. I'm getting up out of here. I'm getting up. Ah! Ah! Somebody make a decision. I'm getting up out of here. Hey, who am I talking to? Did it up say There's a difference in despair and desperation. It was already there. The woman with the issue of blood, where are you going? Woman with the issue, where are you going? We've already told you what to do. Take your issue and go home and learn to deal with it. Mm Mm-hmm. And you know who told her that? The church. Yeah. Take your issue and go home. Because you're not going to fit on no committees around here. You're not going to be no ladies auxiliary present around here. Not with that thing that you got. So they labeled her. So they put a label on her. She had to announce to everybody, I'm unclean, I'm unclean. Everybody run from me. Anybody ever felt like that when you come in church? You didn't even have to say it. The look said it all. You ever showed up to convocation or or some kind of district service? But oh my God, I done got off my notes. And they looked down their nose at you and said, what are you doing here? Desperation 
looks different than despair. Despair says, oh, why me? Despair says, oh, y'all just don't know what they did to me. Oh, y'all don't know how they hurt me. Oh, y'all don't know what they call me, Pastor. You, they don't know. You don't know. I know, baby. You're the only one that's ever been through it. I know. I know. <laughs> You're the only one ever lost somebody. I know. You're the only one that's ever been cheated on. I know, I know, I know. You're the only one that's ever, ever lost something dear to you. Oh my God. The question tonight is, will you be made whole? Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, Holy Ghost. The question is, will you be made whole? Because the chains are just about to fall. I, I'm warning you right now. They're about to fall. And my question is, what are you going to do? Are you going to be like the woman with the issue? Babe, excuse me. Excuse me. I, I'm not even saying unclean. I don't receive the label that you're... Excuse me. Excuse me. I, I don't care what you call me. I don't care how you talk about me. I don't care if you put me out. But what I need don't come from you. It comes from him. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I got to get to Jesus. I got to get to Jesus. Oh my God. How desperate are you? How desperate are you? Desperation says, I don't care what I got to do to get there. I got to get there. I got to get to Jesus. Who's desperate? No, 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 no. Desperation is not cute. Desperation is ugly. I'll just sit right here and wait. We're, we're waiting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't see any desperate people yet. You're still worried about what they're going to say about you. That's not desperation. That's despair. I need to know who's desperate tonight. Then what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Come on, while the waters are troubled. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. If the singers are around, we just gonna sing one song. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There is power in the name of Jesus. There's still some more of y'all out there. Don't stay in Hurtsville. Don't, don't settle in despair when your deliverance is right here. There is power in the name of Jesus. It'll break every chain. It'll break every chain. It'll break every chain. Lord, break every chain. Break every chain. Lord, break every, 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 every chain. There is power ooh, in the name of Jesus. Mm, if you believe it, raise those hands and begin to receive it right now. There is power and it's in the name of Jesus. Come on and speak the name. Demons tremble when you say the name. The atmosphere has to change when you speak the name. There's salvation in no other name. I need you to open up your mouth and just start screaming, Jesus. I need you. I'm not going home the same way. I'm not going back the same way. I don't care if they talk about me. I don't care what they call me. I don't care if they put me out. My power is not in man. My destiny is not in man. But I believe. I believe. You hold the power, yeah, break every chain, right now, right now, right now, break every chain, break every, 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 every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. 
There is power in the name of Jesus. Come on, I want you to begin to declare that over your life. Say it. There is power. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Come on, I want hell to hear you. Where is it at? And what can it do? What can it do? Come on and shout it. I don't care if you're on key. you feel freedom I want you to lift those hands I want you to prove hell wrong yeah you can come out of hurt still alive yes you can you're gonna have some scars you're gonna have some bruises but that's your story and don't you hide it your story will empower somebody else to come out come on come on come on come on in the spirit I can hear it Chains are falling. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the spirit, I can hear it. Chains are falling. In the spirit, I can hear it. Oh, come. Chains. 